Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves in the streets of Victorian London, where heroes and monsters fight to death. Monster vs. Heroes by Ares Games is a tactical game for 2-8 players, ages 8 and up, and plays within 10 and 30 minutes. Now there's 18 different characters in the game that you might be playing. Maybe you'll play Dracula, who can control the forces of darkness. Van Helsing, that can destroy the undead. Frankenstein's monster that can run havoc, or Watson that can ask for help from Sherlock Holmes. You'll be assigned a secret faction, monsters or heroes, but will you be able to keep that faction a secret until the end? Today, we'll be doing a rule school, where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. So I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video, just in case you want to jump to a specific spot of the rules. Well, without further ado, let's get started. Monsters vs. Heroes Victoria Nightmares is a tactical card game for 2 to 8 players where some of you might secretly be heroes and some of you might secretly be monsters. During the game you'll be playing cards and activating text which will give you special abilities throughout the game but you're trying to gather icons that are on your side. For example, this is a hero icon, I want lots of those if I'm secretly a hero. The game has two different decks, one from the Sherlock Holmes side of things and the other deck is a classic horror with characters like Dracula and Van Helsing. Let's see if you can tactically play your cards right and get the right people on your side at the right time. The game comes with two decks of cards, and a deck consists of character cards and faction cards. So here we have a deck on the left, which is known as the London After Midnight deck, and it's denoted by the icon on the lower right of the character cards as a stake, and the lower middle of the faction cards as a stake as well. On the right here we have the Sherlock and Hell deck, and those character cards have a pipe on the bottom right, and in the middle of the bottom of the faction cards they have a pipe, so you can uh, tell which deck is which by looking at those icons. Now the two decks can be played separately or shuffled together for a larger game. For example, only one of these decks is recommended to play with four or less players. And if you're doing that, you'll take the deck that you don't want to play with. For example, if we wanted to play with Sherlock and Hell, we would take the faction cards and the character cards from the other deck and return them back to the box. Now if you're playing five to eight players, or if you're playing with four or less and you want to play a longer game, you can shuffle all the character cards from the two decks together, and all of the faction cards from the two decks together, making one large deck of each. In this case, we're playing with a smaller player count, so we're going to remove the London After Midnight deck from the game. Next, you'll take all of the faction cards for that deck. In this case, we chose that Sherlock and Hell deck, so there's a total of six cards, three monsters, three heroes. Now, you'll shuffle all these up, and each player will get one face down that they'll secretly look at. Now, notice that since there is three heroes and three monsters, and since this is delivered randomly to each player, if you're playing with two or three players, it is possible for all players to either be heroes or monsters. So for example, we were dealt our single faction card face down, we would secretly look at it, and then we could put it face down in front of us for the game. Any faction cards left over at this point get put back in the box face down without anybody looking at them. Next you'll shuffle all of the character cards, and then you'll place one face up next to the draw deck. This is going to be the beginning of the discard pile. Then each player will draw three cards from the top of the deck to make their starting hand. After each player has been given their three cards in their hand, they can decide to keep these three cards or discard all three cards to the discard pile and draw three new ones. But if they do that, they must keep the three new ones in their hand. At this point, the last player to see a horror movie goes first, or it's the youngest if there's a tie. The object of the game is to have the most points at the end of the game, and this will depend on the single faction card that you were given at the beginning of the game. You had two possibilities, heroes or monsters. Heroes are these icons, and monsters are these icons. So let's say that we had this faction card, this was our single one. We're going to be trying to have as many of these as possible, and the least amount of monsters as possible. And it would be vice versa if you had a monster secret faction card. Because at the end of the game, you're going to take the amount of these heroes, and you're going to subtract it by the number of monsters, and that will be your point total. There will also be some bonuses as well. The game is played over multiple turns, where each player will take a turn by either drawing a card or playing a card, and then it will continue clockwise. This will continue until the last character card is drawn, which will end the game. On your turn, you're either going to draw a card off the top of this deck, or play a card from your hand. 
However, you can never have more than three cards in your hand. So at the beginning of the game, since you're given three cards, your first turn must be to play one of these cards. However, if you have less than three cards, you could choose to draw a card for your turn and that would end your turn and it would go clockwise. When you play a card, you select one from your hand and you play it into your play area just in front of you. There's no maximum number of cards that can be in front of you in your play area. When you do so, you will read the text to all the players. Now, before we go into some of the text and the cards, let me show you there's three types of cards in the game. There are hero cards, which have the hero logo on them. There's monster cards that have monster logos on them. And there is a neutral card that has one or the other. In this case, it says you may discard one or two of your cards from your hand. And since it says may, it's optional. But let's say I'd like to discard this card. Now, there's different reasons why you would choose a specific card to discard. Maybe you're not interested in the power. Or maybe it might give you negative points to the game. Or maybe you're just trying to bluff as to what your secret faction is. Either way, when you do this and you discard it, it would go to the discard pile next to the draw deck. It would then go to the next player's turn clockwise. Now, just as I said, if you had three cards in your hand, you must play a card. If you have no cards in your hand, you must draw a card. Other than that, you have the choice to draw a card or play a card on your turn, then it goes to the next player. Also keep in mind the discard pile is public knowledge and anyone can look through it at any time. Now, sometimes when you play a card, it might have to do with other cards. For example, this Watson card says, if Sherlock Holmes is on the table or in the discard pile, put him in your area, ignoring skills. On the table means in anybody else's area. The discard pile is the discard pile. Let's say another player had Sherlock Holmes in front of them. I would add them here. And if you ignore skill, it means you do not do the text on the card. Now, when playing a card, it must go in your own area. You can never place it in someone else's area unless a card specifically tells you you can. Some cards allow you to move things back and forth. This says you may move a card from your area to another player's area, except Sherlock Holmes or any Baker Street or regular card. And in this case, I have no monsters that I want to send over there, so I don't have to take this because that said I may. Now, when you play a card, you must follow the text if you can. This says take every imp. Imp is another type of card that says imp on it. It says take every imp card in the discard pile and put them in any player's area, ignoring the skills. Well, if there were no cards in the discard pile that had the imp on it, you could still play this card. You just would not do the skill. Some skills have you exchange all cards. This one says exchange all the cards in your hand with all the cards in another player's hand. Well, this one says exchange all the cards in your area, except this one with all the cards in another player's area. If you had no cards in your area or in your hand, that's okay. You would still get the cards from the other player's area or hand based upon the card. They would just get nothing in return. Turns continue in this clockwise manner until the final card is taken from the draw pile where the game ends immediately. Any cards in any player's hands are all discarded to the discard pile without doing any effect. At that point, each player is going to flip over their faction card and begin to score themselves. Now, this shows us that we're heroes and this reminds us what that icon looks like. We're going to add up all of those icons on all the cards in our player area. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We will then subtract from that the other side's icons, in this case, the monsters. One, two, three. Seven minus three is four points. Now, each of these faction cards also has a bonus. This says if I have John Watson or Lestrade, I get two more points. So in this case, I do have Watson, so I get two more points for a total of six points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. In case of a tie, the winner is the person that had played last in the game. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into monsters versus heroes and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have any further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video. Now, that's the best place to ask them because not only will I be notified, but so will Ares Games.